Yes, slow it down. One of my personal projects that I'm most proud of is a time-lapse film I shot called Philly Is Ugly. I produced it in the summer of 2013, and if you want to check it out, it's only five minutes long, and you can see it over at phillyisugly.com. I had this idea to shoot a time-lapse film, but I wanted to create something that was going to appeal to people in and outside of the city. I also had this lingering idea that maybe I could create a time-lapse film that would combine scenes in Philadelphia that I really liked and were also shots that a Hollywood location scout would be interested in seeing. The thought being that if I could get more films or TV shows shot in and around Philadelphia, well, maybe, just maybe, people in the general public would begin viewing the city in a little bit more of a positive light. I really didn't know what I was getting myself into, so I started looking around on YouTube and Vimeo for time-lapse films so I could get an idea of what other people were creating and to give myself an idea of what would pass as something that was acceptable, kind of setting a bar. I was also looking for what other people were doing so I could see if I could find a little creative angle that would help my film stand out a little bit more. One thing I do remember doing when I was beginning this project was I would catch myself counting the exact number of scenes in every time-lapse film, and then I would look to see the time-lapse films I preferred. Was there a specific number of scenes? Did the scenes correlate in some way? Was there a color scheme that I seemed to prefer? Just exactly how the scenes worked and if they told some kind of story. The concept for my time-lapse film that I finally settled on was to shoot the most beautiful scenes in the city I could find and shoot them in such a way that I could build a film that would start at sunrise, move through midday, into sunset, and then finish up at night. Now, in addition to checking out these other time-lapse films, I really started looking at the most beautiful landscape and urban photography I could find. Stuff that was really stunning, had great color, great depth, and was just generally beautiful overall. So, after getting a loose idea of what I wanted in my own mind, I built a Google map, and I started mapping locations around the city that I wanted to shoot. After I had all my locations in place, I then copied the map over into Photoshop and I started dropping color-coded pins in each of these locations based on how I wanted to frame my shots. If I knew there would be a particular building in the shot and I wanted the sun to be lighting it from either the left or the right, I would choose whether I wanted to shoot that particular scene at sunrise or sunset. I coded all the locations in this map based on whether I would shoot them at sunrise, in the middle of the afternoon, at sunset, or in the middle of the night. Using this info, I went ahead and scheduled every single location I was going to shoot so I knew where to go and shoot every morning when I woke up and every evening after I finished up with my regular work. This map was an absolutely essential element in giving me a solid game plan and ensuring that I always knew what I was going to go shoot today, tomorrow, and the day after. The project took about three months to shoot. I would wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, drive to a location, set up my cameras, shoot the scenes, I would head back home, work all day, then I would head back into the city for the sunset and nighttime shots that I also needed to capture. I shot this project from May 2013 to about the end of August 2013, so I had maximum hours of daylight here on the East Coast in the United States. The key to getting the shots with my DSLR was basically showing up, having a sturdy tripod, framing the shot how I wanted it, and having a decent intervalometer. I also shot everything in RAW for maximum dynamic range and editability later on. The intervalometer is key. It's what I use to automate my camera, shooting a photo every 6 seconds. I chose to shoot every 6 seconds because I knew I wanted to output a 24 frames per second movie, so for every one minute I had the camera taking photos, I would get 10 frames, and to shoot sequences that would be 10 second clips, so I'd have a decent amount to choose from, I'd be shooting a particular scene for 25 minutes. This would net me 250 frames, which would get me close to 10 and a half seconds of finished footage after I had processed it. Now, after each shoot, 
I would transfer my raw photos to an external hard drive where they would live until I was ready to begin the editing process. Each series of photos was organized into its own folder that I would name after the date and the location where it was shot so I could keep track of the sheer vast number of photos that I was shooting. I shot almost 70,000 frames for this project. I opened the raw photos in the camera raw editor where I would adjust white balance and tweak the tones and contrast and, you know, make sure I sharpened each image exactly the same. Camera raw makes this process pretty easy because I could just edit one single photo and then copy those settings across all the rest of the photos from that shot. I would then import the raw photos from each folder into After Effects and export the series of raw photos on a timeline as a .mov clip that I could then drag into Premiere to do the actual editing. This was the process of converting a series of still photos into a single movie clip. Once I was in Adobe Premiere, it was simply a matter of adjusting the timing of the clips and choosing what I wanted and clipping together the scenes to build the actual time-lapse film. This is also where I added my soundtrack and clipped and trimmed and snipped the video to change scenes with and against the beat of the music. After all the editing was finished and I exported the video, I got to work sending it to any and all magazine publications I could find and anybody really that would repost or share the video or even do any kind of write-up about the film. I also created an entire behind the scenes page, posted a few tutorials on how I did some of the techniques on my YouTube channel, but I only ever posted the time lapse film on Vimeo. Don't ask me why. I also reached out to every local TV station and media outlet I could find around Philadelphia. I found producers who worked at the stations on Twitter or LinkedIn, really anywhere I could track them down. And I was invited onto a number of shows and a bunch of different media outlets, TV stations, and blogs. Some of these people put together posts and articles talking about or sharing the film. And within a couple months, the video reached well over 100,000 views. It honestly got much bigger than I ever expected. But I think it's a testament to taking a piece of artwork you create and sending it all over the place to anybody that's willing to talk about it. And if you have work that is decent, work that other people like or resonates with, people will watch it, people will view it, and people will share it. But as the artist, you have to push your work out there and have conviction and believe in it. Now, in addition to it being shared and pushed around, I've also licensed the footage for a number of different events and agencies that have passed through Philadelphia. I've worked with the city of Philadelphia from this project. I've even landed a number of clients directly from this project. So one thing I would like to leave you with is that personal projects can be so important and sometimes diving headfirst into them, committing really hardcore to them, spending some money to make something that you're passionate about, even if it doesn't appear to have any immediate purpose, you still will have undertaken a project that's going to teach you so much, and you'll have a piece of artwork or a film or a series of photos that you're gonna be proud of for a very long time. And maybe, just maybe, someone will see it and love it and buy it or license it or hire you to make something similar for them at a premium price. I spent about 2,500 of my own dollars and hundreds of hours on this project, never expecting anything in return. And yet I've made somewhere between 50 and $60,000 just from this one single time lapse. I never imagined that I'd make any money at all from this project. I just wanted to make this film that made these Hollywood film scouts look at Philly and say, huh, that looks like a place we can go and shoot. So not only did I end up with fifty or $60,000 at the end of the day, but I ended up with a film that I love and that I'm so, so proud of.